Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. What's up, everybody? How are we doing? Welcome to this week's community showcase. Let's switch over to stream there. There we go. But yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we're all having a good weekend there. Welcome on in. Let's get all the things set situated. There we go. Now we're all set. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. We have a bunch of fun stuff to go over today. Uh, a lot of uh, blueprints, definitely a lot, a lot of blueprints to go over. Have some really cool maps and some habitats that are in zoos. And then we also have some, <clears throat> excuse me, we also have the uh, mods. We have a whole bunch of really cool mods to look over there as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and get on into it there. How are you doing, uh, Seabirds? Good to see you. Oh, I forgot to send my mods the... Uh, the things this morning in our discord message that's all right you guys can see him actually you know what no before we get started i will send over for the mods i will send over today's list where is our where's our mess there it is kablamo there you go maybe a little bit easier for y'all so cool let's go ahead and jump in and not waste any time so the first thing hey silver fox what's up buddy First thing we're gonna look at are the mods. Always like starting off with the mods. So the first one, this is awesome, look at this. We have the Beluga Whale from Leaf and Erica, spelled like that in the background, A-R-I-K-A. -A. But yeah, so there is from Leaf and Erica. Let's see if I find one that's swimming. This one's swimming a little bit. There it goes. But look at that. That's <laughs> pretty awesome. Let's speed up the time a little bit. I wanna see them swimming around. Let's see them swimming around a little bit. There they go. There it goes. So yeah, there you go from Leaf and Erica. We have the beluga whale. So they're getting a bunch of uh, bigger fish and porpoises and mammals and all that kind of swimming around for uh, for your zoo. So cool. There you go. And a lot of people are going to be able to use that. Good stuff. Uh, let's go over to the land animals. Land animals. Here we go. So we're going to have two of them this week. Well, actually, there's technically three, but one of them I'll explain why we're not showing it on stream in uh, just a second. But first one is going to be from uh, this is Bongo's, right? Yeah, the American White Ibis from or Ibis from Bongo Hardwood. I think it was last week we saw the red one, uh, the red Ibis or whatever it was called from Bongo. So here's the American White Ibis. Look at this. It looks great. Look, see the um, the eyes. It's kind of crazy how like they're so blue. I love the contrast between the um, sky blue eyes and the uh, beak there. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool looking. So there is the uh, female, and then you have the male hanging out over here. There goes the scarlet one. Yes, the scarlet one. Yeah. So there you go. Here's the male taking a little rest. So cool, yeah, the American White Ibis from Bongo. Bongo's already is always putting out a bunch of uh, really, really cool stuff. Yeah, they are really cool. Yep, they are really cool. Uh, let's go in the back here to the uh, next animal. So this is going to be, oh, this is so good looking. Actually, I think this looks better than the uh, Frontier model. Um, we have the brown hyena. Now, I know that we have a different, I think it's a different species of hyena in game, but I love the fur that comes off this. It looks more ragged and uh, kind of more dirty and grungy looking, which the hyenas that I've seen in zoos uh, kind of more look so like this than the in game frontier model. Um, so, yeah, I love this. It looks really good. Here is, and again, this is from Dr. Hyena and Giorno Pizza. So, there, there you go. Here's the uh, female brown hyena, and there's the male behind it. But yeah, again, I love the. Uh, the fur on it, the matty looking fur. So there you go. Look at the face. Has it's almost has a very canine looking face to it. Yeah, they, they look really great. Yep, they look really great. So definitely get those. And by the way, these are all standalone uh, animals. So if you are wondering if these are replacement mods or whatever, no, these are all uh, standalone animals. So very nice. And then the last animal. So it's listed. Uh, down there, but I'm not, I can't show it off, unfortunately, because YouTube might have a conniption fit and quite literally uh, give me a, a strike on the channel. <laughs> so let me zoom on up here to the community showcase. We'll show it off um, on screenshots because I'm, I'm sure that the screenshots are uploaded of the. So this is going to be the proboscis monkey, a uh, realistic proboscis monkey overhaul mod. So I'll show off the um, the Nexus page for it, but yeah, so basically it's realistic because they have a dingling. Oh man, even the screenshots for the, um, I'll show off the uh, the headshot of it. 
<laughs> here you go uh there we go so this is the rework and this is done by i think it was leaf right yeah so the proboscis monkey overhaul was done by leaf so this is just a a quick little glimpse uh, of it there and then i'll, I'll do a quick so there you <laughs> that's why it's realistic so uh, i think if i i think i can do that and get away with it but anyways it's a very realistic uh overhaul of the proboscis monkey and if you would like that you can get it for your zoos so cool there you go um but yeah really good stuff from our modders this week really um good job there from bongo erica gerano pizza dr hyena and of course leaf noise so cool let's go ahead and move on to the blueprint section I have a lot of really good blueprints to look over today all right so first up and uh this didn't take long to get in here but here is the modular aviary aviary set there have been a few others of these um, up on, hey Amelia, how we doing? Uh, there have been other uh, aviary modular sets up on the workshop, but we haven't had any that had the uh, new fencing in there. That's the big thing, is it has the new mesh fencing uh, in there. So it's really, really good. So uh, yeah, these work really easy, just kind of um, plopping them around. Just use them as building pieces to uh, make up aviaries, stuff like that. So yeah, really good, really good stuff. So there's um, the modular aviary set from ZZ. Next up, we have uh, ZZ made a bunch of these last week, too. We had like a rhino and a few other things. But here is the Chinese pangol uh, pangolin uh, from ZZ. And this is recolorable as well. So it's supposed to look like a statue you can use in your zoos. Very good. <laughs> and last up here from ZZ, we have the tile building set. So this is another really awesome recolorable set. Um, kind of similar to the aviary set, but yeah, these are the this is the tile wall set using the brand new plaster uh, pieces from the Africa pack. So if you have the Africa pack, go ahead and take this, and again, it's really easily recolorable. Just like some of the bricks here, you want to recolor throughout, recolor it, new no problem. And yeah, that'll look really good. It'd be a really good building set for uh, people to use in your zoo. So cool, yeah, good stuff from ZZ. Next up, we have a lot of stuff from this next creator, Savannah, Miss Simply Savannah. She has, uh, she was busy during the um, lead-in to Africa, or yeah, the, uh, the Africa Pack week, and uh, built like a fennec fox, a meerkat, and a few other um, habitats, as well as the uh, custom fences over here, which turned out so good. Uh, I think it was Estine and I were talking to her, and we're like, um, oh, and she was showing off uh, fences. She's like, do you think I should make these a pack? We're like, yes! <laughs> People love to get uh, custom fences. So yeah, look at all these right here. Look at all these. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. At least six um, different fences here for you to use. And again, I love the little uh, planter that she uh, provided for you in the background is there as well with the, what are the, the fever tree, the yellow fever tree? Yeah, the fever tree. So yeah, really good stuff there from Savannah and it also gives a little uh, showing of how you can kind of put them together and what it can look like. So yeah, really, really good stuff uh, from Savannah. Really useful uh, there. Yeah, aren't they great? Yeah, really useful, exactly. Next up from Savannah, Miss Simply Savannah, this is the, oh, I hope I uh, say the right ones, uh, the meerkat habitat. I'm almost positive this is the meerkat, <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I think it is, there we go. Uh, but here's the meerkat habitat, and I love this. This looks so good. Um, yeah, I just love all the curves that she used, and really good use of the new plaster set. All the little cubbies as well. Where you can tell that um, the meerkats might be able to climb up in there, even have little bits of straw and hay down to uh, have them lay down and everything. So, and don't forget, if you're not following Savannah on YouTube, uh, she has videos, speed builds of all these uh, different habitats that we're showing off as well. So follow her on YouTube to get all of um, those. So yeah, there is the meerkat habitat. Go ahead and plop that into your zoos. It's ready to go. Next up, from Savannah, I think this is the fennec fox. I'm almost positive. Yeah, it has to be, right? It's either that or the warthog. Apologies uh, in advance if it's the wrong one. But I think this is the... Oh, you know what? I think it's the warthog. <laughs> Anyways, it's one of those twos. Uh, but this is a really, really nice habitat there. Yeah, the style. Yeah, she has a really good, unique style. And speaking of style, you can see where the, the fence uh, came in that she built. The custom fence that you can use. Yeah, it looks really good there. And then the last habitat here. Let's see if this gives us a clue which one it was. I put these out of order like a dingus. I was a dinkus, put them out of order. But here's the last habitat, which is either the um, the warthog or the fennec. I think this is the fennec, and the other one was the warthog, because it had like a mud pit area. 
Have a good one, Crownie. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, you know, I th I'm almost positive. I remember from her speed builds. Uh, this is the Fennec Fox one. So cool. Yeah, here's the yeah. This is the Fennec Fox habitat again. Really like the uh, Moroccan kind of style with it. No worries, Lion Rider. What's up, buddy? And then this is the Warthog. There you go. And then finally the Meerkat along with the fences. So yeah, really good. A whole bunch of uh, really good items from Savannah. Really useful um, habitats. Hey, what's up? Um, Sawdust. <laughs> Someone over people's names. Um, but yeah, really good useful habitats and fences from Savannah. Noish. Noish. All right, let's go down the line like a typewriter here. Let's see what we have from the next creator. Oh, this is all from Planet Zoo Blogger. Planet Zoo Blogger has a lot of really good stuff this week. So first up. We have, what do they call this? The Cute Chalet House. Yeah, that's it, the Cute Chalet House. Uh, so here, oh, I didn't really lower this all the way, but eh, that's all right, you get the idea. Uh, but yeah, look at this, this is great. I love the little um, campfire. Oh, sorry, excuse me, just ate lunch. A uh, little campfire you have uh, out front with the hose and everything. Everything, oh, hiccuping now. Didn't check, let's see if there's an interior. Don't think there is, nope, but you can definitely fit a building in there. Uh, but yeah, I love how that looks, all the landscaping, everything. Very cute, very quaint, right? Good stuff. Good stuff. Next up, this is going to blow everyone's minds. I know people love the pixel art. You know what this looks like? This looks like... Okay, well, first off, this is called the Pixel uh, Pixel Animal Signs by Planet Zoo Blogger. Um, but this looks like... Um, I What's that new game called? The Zoo Game. Let's Build a Zoo. It looks like Let's Build a Zoo a little bit. So, yeah, there you go. These look so good. Look at how incredibly detailed and well done these are. Now, how far away can we zoom out before they kind of disappear? You know what? They actually go really far. Oh, dang, they go really far. So they're using some new piece that's not the gutter. There it goes. Pretty far, pretty high up there. Pretty high up there. So, uh, yeah, no, these look great. Yeah, the 8-bit styles. Yeah, I love them. I love them. The lion, I think, is especially one of my favorites. The lion and the hippo. Oh, I don't know, the rhino looks pretty awesome, too. I'm kind of curious what pieces. Yeah, probably bigger pieces. Yeah, I wonder what pieces they used. Ah, the Planet Zoo gutter funnel. Oh, and I even said that wasn't the gutter. I think they made the gutter LODs better because I'm pretty sure that people have used the gutter ends like that before and that they would stop pixelating you or stop being able to see them like we're about here. Either way, uh, really good stuff from uh, Planet Zoo Blogger. That was really good. And next up from Planet Zoo Blogger, this is like an entire hab, like an interior. I can't believe this all fit within a uh, blueprint. Uh, but this next one is going to be the ultra detailed reptile house by Planet Zoo Blogger. The elephant? Yeah, I know, right? It looks really good. <laughs> cool. So let's head into the reptile house from Planet Zoo Blogger. And again, I can't believe that this fits all within one blueprint that you can put into your zoos. Love the custom doors. Let's put a, just for um, curious about the scale, I'm pretty sure it's really good. Yeah, it's like perfect. Um, but yeah, let's head on in. And here we go. Look at this. It looks so good. I like to see other um, blueprints being utilized really well. But yeah, this interior is really, really nice. So there's certain areas where I'm noticing I didn't set up like the habitat, but you can kind of use your imagination that there'd be like a glass panel in front of here. You could set up um, where the caiman would kind of be inside there. But yeah, look at all the detail in here. Really great classic reptile house, huh? <laughs> yeah, right, Yokimi is just wow. <laughs> More caimans over here. Love all the foliage they have in there. And the glass up here to let all the sunlight in. I've said it so many times, but the lighting in Planet Zoo is perfect, isn't it? Like, especially for interior stuff. Just checking. Oh, that's where staff pathing is. Uh, but yeah, for interiors, like, I love the shadows and lighting that you get in here. So just different wings. There you go. The desert monitor would go over there. What's that in the background? What the heck? What are you? Oh, it's a heater that's... Oh, by the African drum. That's really clever. Yeah, a heater covered by the African drum. That's that's clever as heck. Yeah, the plants are really good. I agree. I think that's the highlight of this build. Yep. The habitats are really well done. Cool. So then we come down here. You got frog. The frog section. What is over here? The, sp the spooters. We're not going down there. No way. Hey, Liam, how we doing, buddy? What was this down here? Iguanas? Nice. Nice. And then uh, I have a snake room. So we have insects and snakes over this way. 
And yeah, it kind of loops all the way around. That's awesome. Insects. So yeah, there you go. And again, I can't believe that this fits. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I can't believe this fits all within the, was it 4K limit of the blueprints? Because yeah, look at this building. Look at it. Oh, they even did like a little bit of foliage growing up top there and everything. So that's really good. So yeah, if you are not wanting to spend time building a reptile house, uh, or, you know, realistically, you could kind of turn this into any house you want to, right? Even though it's set up for some of these exhibits to be, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever they are. Uh, this is a snail. You could set this up to be something different. You could change out the lettering so it's not black came and it'd be something else. So you could definitely uh, take this as a shell and have a good time with it there. So cool. Yeah, really good stuff there from Planet Zoo Blogger. Uh, nice. Let's head on to the next little bit there. Ah, yeah, here we go. This is going to be from our favorite, Lucas070. There we go. What's that? What'd you miss? No, you know, your stuff, your stuff is, I think you're last this week. Saving the best for last. <laughs> so here we go. More custom fences. This is going to go great with uh, Savannah's fences as well. Uh, they complement each other. But here are custom fence, uh, custom fences part three from Lucas070. Hey, bold. Uh, but look at these. Lucas got some inspiration, which means that we are going to get another update to one of Lucas's projects soon, probably. This is perfect right here, right? This is like, this is the one right there. That's what everyone needs. <laughs> the mesh fencing. Yeah, look at these. Yeah, I love all these. Um, I'm just kind of taking a look at this one. This is the, um, the kind of uh, effect that people are doing with their... Uh, like rhinos and elephants and different habitats that are sunken down. They're using the uh, faux tree with the rock on top. And Lucas just went ahead and made a modular bit of it to uh, paste around. Yeah, I've seen like Wyatt and I think just Gore and others kind of start to use this technique uh, for their habitat. So yeah, again, if you sink down the terrain and you don't want to have like a cement box, basically, uh, you can use this instead. It looks really nice, like um, fake... Uh, fake rocks and stuff like that. Do do do. Is that your temperate reskin? No, I don't have that in at the moment. Uh, sawdust. I, I this is the first time I booted up the game, uh, and I didn't put your uh, mod in yet. We'll show it off next week because I think I saw that you uh, submitted it to the showcase, but it was a little bit too late. So we'll show it off next week. Uh, and then also from Lucas, oh, more really good stuff. Uh, Zoo props the Taliza Wildlife Ranch uh, from Lucas. That's right. We're looking at that later. I think. Aren't we? No, we're not. Not this week. Uh, but anyways, yeah, here's some really good useful props um, from Lucas. Look at this. Look at these. I love this light. Wait, did we look at Taliza Zoo last week, was it? I can't remember. I feel like we did look at it, though. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, I think we did. And I was yelling at Lucas, like, hey, put this on the workshop. Put that on the workshop, too. And then they did. <laughs> and then he did. I always recommend to creators, if you're getting to the end of a project or in the middle of one or whatever, just to take random objects that you think are useful and throw them up on the workshop. Look at that, the hay bales and everything. Ah, I had to get a drink of my Dr. Pepper. I love the um, the shade right here. That's really good. Cool. So yeah, really good stuff from Lucas070. <laughs> Next up from Angry Skull. This is one of two things we're looking at from Angry Skull. Uh, this is the Pechenderm House. I think this is, your name's not Angry Skull on Discord, is it? Who are someone else, and I want to mention that name as well. There it is, Steam Cat. I think I saw Steam Cat in chat earlier, so I want to make sure we get that uh, off. But yeah, here is the Pachyderm House using the uh, a lot of the Moroccan pieces there. There, there's Steam Cat right there, <laughs> right there. So there you go. There's a really nice facade, uh, and then in the interior here, you can see big open space for you to put down um, pretty much anything for your elephants, you know, or any of your Pachyderms, right? And you can see where it kind of leads out into different uh, areas for your yard and stuff. So yeah, I think that's really cool themed out using uh, the new Africa pieces really well. And yeah, really good stuff for uh, people's zoo. Such a big structure. Love it. <laughs> nice. So you need this. Yeah, there you go, Seth. You have it. You now have it. Worked really well. So cool. Good stuff there from Angry Skull, otherwise known as Steam Cat. We will see more from them later on. Next up. We have from Theseon. We've seen a lot of stuff from Theseon. This is the Meerkat Mansion. Oh, so we're getting very swanky here. <laughs> Again, really like the foliage and rock work. I think they did a spectacular job with that. 
And uh, also did a really good job with the sneaky little bit right down here. He's, I didn't even notice that before. But that's where your meerkats would go in and out right through here into their mansion. So this is just the backyard. Can't imagine what the interior is going to look like. <laughs> nice. Let's go on to the inside and see what the mansion. I feel like whenever I say mansion, I have to say it like that. The mansion uh, looks like, ooh, yeah, really nice rock work covering up the, uh, the desert biomes. Desert exhibits fits in really nicely. Big old interior for everyone. <clears throat> ah, and there they go. Oh, you know what? That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I, uh, I totally expected something different in here, but I like how it's kind of surrounded by the desert exhibit boxes. And then you have this little like uh, little peekaboo box where they uh, where they take a little nap. So cool. It's two uh, meerkat exhibits that we saw this week, and both a little bit different from each other. So very good stuff from Thesian there with the meerkat mansion. Yeah, really good job, right? Nice. And then rounding out our week here is our true and tried and uh, trustworthy to submit something every single week, basically. <laughs> That's going to be Seth from DH Roof. So the first one is another dinosaur that I swear he's making up dinosaur names at this point just for me to like stumble across the name of it. This is supposed to be a Amargos. Oh, it's not that bad. Amargosaurus. So those of you that know what that looks like, there it is. There you go from the Dinorama. And then, uh, yeah, Seth also made a pyramid. And he literally called it Pyramid. He said it's for, uh... He said it's for Nicholas Lionrider. I guess Lionrider needs a, uh... A Pyramid, so... Cool, there you go, from Seth. You got the... That dinosaur and the Pyramid. It's in JWE2. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Every single time I say the name of a... Dino correctly, take a shot. That's right. That's right. We're going to think of, a uh, Some drinking games for zoo nerds when Planet Coaster 2 comes out. Like every single time they, like zoo nerds who still watch, say the name of like a developer or a company, right? A manufacturer correctly, take a shot. But anyways, <laughs> Pyramid Power. Hey, Amazing Builder, what's up, buddy? I saw you sneaking over there. Uh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Holy guacamole. Now we get to go on to the zoos. And there's some really good ones. So uh, we have really good stuff from every, actually a really good week. Uh, some really useful um, items from ZZ. Um, yeah, ZZ, Savannah, and Lucas kind of had a similar theme with giving us some uh, modular building sets and some fence packs and some habitats and everything. Again, can't believe that this actually fits into a blueprint. Print. Uh, <laughs> uh, Planet Zoo Blogger is pulling some trickery here, uh, cheating the game, I'm telling you, to uh, to get that to work. But again, that's really, really good. Um, so yeah, and then some uh, other really good habitats. Everyone's really into habitats this week, so that's really good. So cool. Hey, let's go ahead and move on to the zoos, because there's some really good zoos and some good uh, habitats and stuff like that to uh, play. Do -do 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 -do. Hey, Madam Corgi, how you doing? Hey, Don and Brooke. Welcome in. All right, let's start to go through here, and we're going to just start left to right. So we're going to go with Mulberry Zoo update, and this is... For, hey, Angry Skull, nice. May as well stick with who we had last time, right? So this is from Steam Cat. Angry Skull, this is Mulberry Zoo. Do, 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 do. Was your habitat considered a zoo? Yes, I'm pretty sure it was. If not, then oopsies. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure if I remember what it was. Hey, weirdos, says the weirdo. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, hey, load it up. Nice. All right, so this was a work in progress, if I remember right. Correctly? Correct? <laughs> Correctly? <laughs> Let's see. This is... Let me double check here. Mulberry Zoo update. Yes, yeah, so it is an update to a project. Cool. Let's take a look. At Mulberry Zoo, which looks like you have the entire layout basically ready to go. Because holy cow, let's start at my favorite place to start, the beginning. So we'll come down here. And we'll keep going through. Look at all the Jeeps coming in. It's Jeep Day at the zoo. How many tickets? You all get your own. We'll head on down the main road here. Love all the foliage as we're coming down. And we have a parking lot. Look at this. We're legit. We have a parking lot. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Blueprints looked amazing. Yeah, they did a lot of great blueprints to uh, sift through this week. Really useful things for everyone to use. We have this really cool main walkway. Here's all the animals that we might be seeing as we're going into our zoo. Look at the fountain. Let's kind of zoom up and over. Yeah, we have a nice little entrance plaza here with an entrance building. How'd you build that? It's mo Is this an in-game item? 
It has to be because it's moving. Oh, new new world clock. There's an item that I just didn't know existed. <laughs> TIL, I learned about the uh, the new world clock. Cool, nice plaza for everyone. Have a little entrance gift shop area and all that. Come on down. Let's see what's going on inside. Oh, look at that. We even had some interiors. Some like botanical gardens. Heck yeah. Let's see what you're rocking with your uh, front plaza area. Nice. We have a little pond. Looks like an eatery. Oh, I like that you have a, uh, a grassy little area, a little picnic area. What's the first animal? Another animated prop. See, look at even the modder forgot that there was that it animated. Yeah, it does though. It tells the it tells the right time. So it's 9:56. It should be 10 on the clock. Yeah, they follow the right time of the game. It's kind of cool. All the clocks do that in the game. But yeah, another animated item. Whew. <laughs> uh, what'd you put for your first animal though? Let's see. The American ah, so this is a modded animal, so we won't see it. But there's supposed to be an American flamingo right there. Hey, look at this. Got a little nature trail going back there. Nice. Very cool. All right, so I like that you've done your infrastructure all out, all your roads and everything. I don't think I've really seen many people do that. But let's go to completed areas. Let's go over here to the left. Holy purple, Batman! Holy purple, Batman. Look at the uh, the flower budget is 100%, 200% even for this area. What do we have over here? Look at all the great habitats. Nice foliage. Yeah, you filled in all the gaps with the, uh, like the lavender flower. What's this one called? The fairy flower? Yeah, the fairy fan flower. <laughs> Doo -doo. All right, so we have a bunch of looks like either Australian or African animals. I'm coming down in. Who do we have? Oh, is it the dingo? So Australia. We have Australia. Nice. I think he's the cassowary. There's a bunch of implied and modded animals in this area. Gotcha. Okay, so I won't guess. If we don't see him, then uh, I won't guess. The wallaby. Hey, this is cool. I love this sign. That's one of my favorite signs ever. It's so bright and in your face. This whole area is really good. Uh, yeah, everywhere you reuse that sign. Yeah, this whole area is very bright. Very nice. All the guests are going somewhere. I got to follow them. Oh, there's our ruse. Hello, kangaroos. Oh, I missed the big building in, in uh, the back here. What do we have over there? Circle food. The budget? We don't know her. Yeah, right? Get that evil temptress out of here. Nice, yeah, go in there. There's a little playground off to the side, too. Yeah, very colorful. I love all the colors. However, I need to know what's going on in here. This looks like an old habitat. The Amazon rainforest. We're going in. We're going in. Whoa! Yeah, we're like right in the middle of the rainforest, aren't we? Look at the scale of the person standing right there. You can just get a feel for how big this place is. <laughs> Nice, get some cool underwater viewing. Looks like there's maybe some, uh, oh, there they are. Some otters running around. Cool. So there was like the, oh, and there's a, a tape here as well. So yeah, what's in the box? It's a rainforest. <laughs> really nicely done. All right, looks like we have another habitat over this way and a smaller box. Ah, there we go. Hey, we just saw these guys, didn't we? <laughs> what were these called again? The white American... Or American white ibis? Yeah, those are cool looking. Oh, it's by Lion Rider. Oh. Yeah, see, I do I recognize a few of the blueprints uh, that we're seeing around here. But hey, that's good use of them. Good use of them. What's everyone doing over here? What's so important over here? Ah, they all need to buy a hat. <laughs> everyone needs a hat. All right, let's go over here. Oh, you know what I missed? It looks like a cave or something. Yeah, it goes down. Show this up. Yeah, there's some underwater viewing over here. Cool. Very cool. All right, and then over this way was a bunch of really neat backstage. But other than that, looked, uh, let's see, was there anything in here? I think this is um, all backstage. Yep, very nice, good backstage area. Cool, let's go take a look at this area over here. This looks um, pretty well done. Maybe still a little bit under work in progress, but hey, there's that uh, building should look familiar, right? There's the uh, Pachyderm house, but it's actually in use so we can see, um, yeah, see it with animals and everything. Let's take a look at the interior. There you go, you can kind of get an idea how uh, how it's set up, or how they set it up at least. You can set it up differently, but that's how uh, 
Steam Cat set it up. Cool. Yeah, really nice use of the new Africa pack or Africa set. Well, look, we even have like a chair lift over here. Well, look at all the foliage and stuff done up. Wow. Wow. Cool, this area looks like it's a little bit work in progress though. So, uh, hey, cool, overall, I think you have um, at least two really good sections laid out and uh, overall the infrastructure of the zoo is all set up. So we're gonna be seeing some more updates uh, from Mulberry, right, Mulberry Zoo? Yeah, Mulberry Zoo. So cool, really good stuff, Steam Cat. Can't wait to see uh, more updates in the future. All right. The gondola, yeah, the, the futuristic gondola. It kind of fits in some uh, with some places. Next up, we're going to go to Leafy's. There we go, Leafy's No Name Zoo. Also, this one, I believe, is going to be halfway done because they, Leafy was saying they were having issues loading the zoo up, I believe. So it was too much. It was too powerful for their, <laughs> for their computer, which, hey, I've been there before. Oh, that didn't take too long with mine. Maybe I missed, uh, maybe it was the wrong one. But uh, either way, let's go ahead and take a look here at Leafy's Zoo, which is the Leafy's No Name Zoo. Nice. All right, so we have a nice little start here. So cool little parking lot. Actually, very nice parking lot. Yeah, I like what the, uh, he had some cool ideas going on over here. Let's go into the main entranceway. Really nice, sleek, modern entrance. Oh, yeah, look, you got the uh, exhibits on the side. I like this uh, rock work as you're coming in, paired with this canopy and everything. Oh, yeah, this is really cool. That's a great entrance plaza. Love all of the uh, the lines going through the uh, area and stuff. Yeah, no, this looks really good. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Lag? Well, I'm getting 60 FPS on my end, so if it is lagging, then I don't know. Give it a refresh. Give it a refresh, maybe. You know how YouTube likes to... Yep, stream is healthy. Eh, you know. Uh, cool, over here, let's see. First animal on the left-hand side, we have our penguins. Nice. A few different viewing areas for the penguins. I like how the keeper talk is uh, kind of marked separate. Cool. So then over this way. Oh, there's a little gift shop and food court. Hey, what's up, Toves? I think we're going to look at something from you later on, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Right. Oh, yeah, you made the uh, thumbnail. <laughs> That's right. Ooh, cool. I love the underwater viewing for our seals. Very nice. Very popular area. What do we have over here? A little sneaky view of something. Oh, the fennec foxes. There they are. <laughs> I love this habitat. The rock work and um, the planters and everything. It's done really, really well. I'm gonna, yeah, next time I'm building, I'm going to stake this little, uh, well, I saw Wyatt do it before, but this, um, what is, what is rock is this? The Temple Painted Stone Support Beam. Yeah, it's kind of doubled up on itself. Looks really cool. And again, the plantings, uh, the planters, rather, everywhere look really good. What do we have over here? I kind of missed something, didn't I? There they are, the meerkats. So, yeah, this was the Africa Pack Zoo. Definitely the Africa Pack Zoo. But again, really cool use of... Now, remember, this is the barrier that we have in game. What is this called? The, uh... The Gabion Barrier. Cool. Let's head this way. What a great zoo. It's a bummer they can't load into it. I recognize these. I've used these uh, planters, or the, these overhangs before. There you go, I have the elephants. You know, that was a really good uh, horse perspective shot. Makes it look like the habitat goes on for a really, really long way. The way you get that is you sink down this area behind it. Yep, see? Kind of a cool little trickery for where the guests are. Totally sells it that it just keeps going back forever and ever and ever. Really good. 
Oh, the, whoa, look at this area over here. Using the Africa pieces in an awesome way. Oh, and you can see where they kind of had to stop or where they stopped uh, building. Well, this is where y'all can need to pick up. You can pick up the uh, the slack there. Since again, I don't, I'm pretty sure that Leafy can't load into this anymore for whatever reason. Uh, this is where y'all can pick up and start building because what a great idea going so far. This reminds me of the, oh, there's your shot right there. There's the view right there. Um, but it reminds me of uh, Italy at Epcot a little bit. And the, what was it, the Moroccan area at Epcot as well. But yeah, more so the uh, Italian area. This looks really good. Yeah, someone should continue. Yeah, download it and continue this on because they have a great start. Great idea going forward. Um, just needs to be kind of continued. So yeah, there you go. There's Leafy's No Name Zoo, the start of it at least, right? Um, ready for anyone to kind of pick up the mantle and build it yourself. So there you go, cool. Be, and that would be cool if, if someone does do that, uh, picks up the pieces here and kind of keeps going with it, submit it back for us so we can see how that looks. Uh, Cause yeah, again, it's a really, really great start. Um, and we'd love to see how it kind of uh, finishes out. So cool, hey, good stuff from uh, Leafy. And that viewing shade, <clears throat> excuse me. If I remember it, that viewing shade is up on the workshop. It's a blueprint item, if I remember right. Next up, ah, we have ZZ's next scenario. This is scenario six. So this is the Arabian Sanctuary. And yeah, if you haven't seen these, uh, obviously there's five others of these, but yeah, ZZ has been making random kind of biomes and terrain sets for people to use um, as scenarios. So just kind of empty-ish. Uh, maps for people to just jump into and build however they want to because it's very very hard for a lot of players to jump into a flat blank map and go okay now build <laughs> so yeah again ZZ has a multitude of different biomes for people to pick from uh, and this being the latest one uh, yeah to do uh, different scenarios and stuff like that so yeah i love that um it is pretty flat for the most part but you have these little hills in the background and you have this cool moroccan village uh at the front there this is so cool this is so cool and again i love that it reminds me so much of the roller coaster tycoon or um, early zoo tycoon and uh, other games of the simulation genre um that would kind of start you out like this you know give you a scenario not just flat map go <laughs> so yeah this looks really cool um so yeah go ahead and download this and continue on the either the village theme or you can do something totally different um but yeah zz has you hooked up here with a great little plot of land to build uh the zoo so there you go go ahead and download the arabian sanctuary scenario six from zz it always can't wait to see um, what ZZ is going to come up with. Also, if you're um, part of our Discord, uh, ZZ has started to post in the general zoo chat. They've been doing um, polls. They've been running polls to see what they should build next. They ran three options last week and had people vote on it. Um, and then I think this is the one that won. So yeah, if you want to have an input into what ZZ builds, uh, be sure to look on the Discord for when they post one of their polls. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool there. <laughs> Next up. Oh, you know what? I just realized uh, Lion Rider's thing is not a saved zoo thing. So we'll have to take a look at that. I just didn't put it in. Because I was like, screw Lion Rider. We're not looking at his bull crap this week. <laughs> You'll play this? Hey, that's cool. That'd be a fun idea, too. If you do play it and, you know, make your own zoo and everything, you should submit it. To the community showcase uh, that goes for anyone that submits it yeah if you play on one of zz scenario maps be sure to submit it for the uh, showcase and we'll take a look at it that'd be fun be like a full circle kind of thing all right so what do we load into loaded into do, 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 do. i think this is going to be the klein tuin zoo in the state 1933 from mealy yeah i don't think we've looked at this for a little while um, but this is a timeline zoo that started in, oh gosh, the late 1800s, if I remember right, or mid 1800s. Uh, but yeah, we're up to 1933. So it's, yeah, viewing a zoo through a timeline like this. I think that's, that's such a cool idea. Such a cool idea. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, the good stuff. Yes, and I have your blooper um, uh, images all saved too, so hopefully those all work out very nicely. Late 1800s. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was 1850s or late later than that. But yeah, this is a really fun project to uh, follow along with, and you can follow it as well up on uh, YouTube. So if you're not already, subscribe to the old Mealy Boy there, the old Mealy <laughs> uh, on YouTube to keep up with the. The timeline zoo it is a neat idea yeah it's a ton of work because realistically you got to think that you know things that you've built not everything but most of the things you built in like you know the 1890s or early 1900s let's say you're gonna have to delete you know or incorporate it somehow that it makes sense that when the zoo gets into today's age you know so yeah it's it's a really big undertaking it's the same zoo, but you're kind of rebuilding it over and over and over and over and over again. And you can always you can always tell that we're gonna have either a lot of objects or it's probably gonna be a better, you know, a, yeah, bigger zoo depending on how long it takes to load <laughs> load up. Yeah, it's it's a really cool idea. I I try to incorporate some like historical stuff into my builds. Like I've done a bear pit before, and um, you know other things like that. But yeah, never to the extent of even in Planet Coaster. There's there's a group in Planet Coaster uh, now. The Rose Lake Park team. I'm actually technically part of the team. I'm going to help them when they get to the 70s. But they did something similar where they started a theme park in the mid 1800s that was like a train station um and they've evolved that over the ages where it was like a a midway that had like a nickelodeon on it and then there was like a baseball stadium and i think they're in like the 1940s now so there's actually like um roller coasters and like the park has been burned down and flooded you know it's just really it's a fun idea to take a timeline park but big undertaking big under the, the history you need to know the the build time the yeah a lot <laughs> a lot isn't uh the submission for this week if that's what you thought actually with 1.6 i don't think it'll work what's that wait what that safari map isn't the submission for this week if that's what you thought actually with 1.6 i don't think it'll work the safari map that i have so yeah i need to unsubscribe from it and get the new one still so um cool all right let's go ahead I'm pretty sure you, you plopped us right where we should kind of start, but oh my gosh, this looks way different. <laughs> it looks way different from what it did. Uh, cool, let's head down the road and see what's going on. Modern, so yeah, eventually it will be modern times. So there you go. So yeah, going from the late 1800s um, and spanning, you know, over 100 years there. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. So I'm inevitably going to miss some stuff. So Silver Fox has already shared the link. Be sure to uh, subscribe to this. Uh, is this a someone begging? Oh, monkey nug. I thought this was a beggar. Um, but yeah, be sure to subscribe to this to really take the necessary time to, um, yeah, to explore this entire amazing uh, project here. So cool, let's go ahead and enter in and have a look-see around. Cool, so we're going to start left to right. We're going to start left to right. Yeah, the cars were cool, weren't they? Yeah, they were really cool. All right. This feels so much like a real zoo. This feels so much like a real zoo with like the open, like uh, plazas and everything like that. Hey, Moonlight, how are you? Good to see you. Here we have our ostriches. I gotta love the wide open spaces and like the fencing, just everything. It feels so uh, realistic to a real zoo. Like I'm not really that up to date with um, zoo history or anything like that. Or like, yeah, the history of zoos. I do know we've come a long way, but you know, I'm just really interested to see all um, all the differences that we're gonna be able to automatically tell with habitats and stuff like that. This is so well done. Did you use the new tile or did you uh, do this before the anchor plate? Yeah, so this was all before the new tile came out. <laughs> I bet when the Africa pack came out and you saw that you're like, oh, maybe I should go back and replace some of the tiles with, nope, nope. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, I love the little uh, placed in habitats here. All the little signs there. Nile monitor. There's the appropriate name for it, I suppose. 
Yeah, the fences and all the details. Right, there's so many. There's a tortoise in there too. Hey, you have some of the implied animals still. There you go. And <laughs> Drax, Zizi, Melee, you as well. All of you who make all the implied animals. There you go. Oh gosh. Is this like a Cobra Wrangler or a... <laughs> oh man. This, this is a unique thing. What does it say here? The poison fangs of these snakes have not been removed. So, okay, don't put your hands over there. Your tiles are great, but I'm not redoing this. That's fair. That's completely fair. Is it stuttering a little bit? Just give it a refresh or give it a minute. Um, sometimes YouTube likes to kind of stutter a little bit. Everything's pretty okay on my end. Yeah, stream's healthy on my end. This is really nice. I love this plaza. Oh, there you go. You got the uh, crocs in their itty bitty habitat. Or the American alligator, excuse me. Uh, that's the that's the thing I'm noticing. All the habitats are very small, right? That's the big thing you notice. Black and white lipped forest cobra. Cape cobra. I love all the signs around. That's what's really zoo like. There's so many signs around. Nile crocodile. Hello. Based on something that used to exist. The snake pit. Nice. Okay. Let's see what we have in here. It's the actual video lags. Hmm. Not sure. We have the radiated tortoise. <laughs> That's really nice. All right, let's go ahead and move out of here. Love the Frank. Yeah, the snake wrangler Frank. <laughs> and keep on moving on. We have there. We have the kangaroos. Man, yeah, again, I really like the wide open spaces because it's very zoo-like. Very, very zoo-like. So it looks like this is where the zoo ends. You notice that? Where the big wall is right here? And the estate begins. If I remember right, that's what the whole history of this is. Um, that an estate owner bought a bunch of like animals and land and stuff like that and kind of turned it into a zoo. So maybe beyond these walls, they actually finally set up um, an actual barrier, border for the zoo now. Kind of separating it between the mansion and the, uh, the zoo. Because before, this was all just kind of wide open. You just kind of meandered through. I remember that very distinctly. Oh, these little boxes over here. These little kennels. <laughs> hey, let me welcome in. That's correct. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, we are looking at... Let me bring back my thing. The Klein Tuin Zoo Estate and Estate of 1933. So this is a timeline zoo that started in the late 1800s. Um, and yeah, now we're up to 1933. Oh, here's our primate houses. So later on, the estate will become part of the zoo. They'll just kind of, yeah, kind of incorporate everything back in. But yeah, as of right now, it's separated. That's so interesting. Like, how would it make it in 1900? Right, yeah. So here you go. Here's some more big differences with, you know, obviously modern times and 1930s. I'm going to keep reiterating that because I know we're going to have people coming in and out and people are going to be like, Ugh, those habitats are so small. Correct. You are absolutely correct, and that is because this zoo, again, takes place in 1933, so you have to not judge it with a 2021 brain, but look at this from a 1933 historical type mindset there. There you go, you have one of the, was this the jaguar, in the, or the leopard? Oh, jaguar in the background. Oh no, <laughs> Lion Rider says these are... Actually, some better habitats for chimps than I've seen in some zoos in the 2000s, which makes you just kind of cringe, doesn't it? I remember this, so they still have the uh, the lion cage. I'm not even going to call it a habitat. These are cages at this point still, right? Definitely still cages. Question for Mealy. What sort of research goes into this? Oh, wow. I can't imagine. This looks so good. This looks so good. In, a, in an accurate point of view way. Oh, there you go. Have all the uh, the birds hanging out. Just finding a bunch of pictures and occasionally videos of old South African zoos. Another person called Nix has helped me out recently finding. So, oh, Nix, yeah, Nix is a great um, community member that hangs out on Bro Nation a lot. You have all the fowl hanging out. I see all the gardening and stuff down there. We'll get there. 
We'll get there. We saw a lot of that, remember, in the past episodes, but we'll definitely take another look at it. The same thing over here. We've seen a lot of this. I'm starting to recognize it, but um, still doesn't hurt to take a look at it again, right? Wow. Yeah, that's really well done. Cool, let's head down. I think we were heading down that whole time. Yep, nice little slope. Shoo, down. Hello, Frank. Goodbye, Frank. <laughs> so yeah, we have more uh, fowls down here. Yeah, some cranes. Really like these habitats. You can see where the little keeper entrances are there? It's a really cool concept. It is. Because, yeah, you just kind of think the next time that we hear from Mealy, and again, if you want to stay up to date with it more uh, regularly, don't forget to subscribe to Mealy's YouTube channel. Um, Silver Fox or uh, Seabrist, if you all want to subscribe, uh, paste Mealy's YouTube channel in chat if you wouldn't mind. Um, but yeah, stay up to date there, or um, if not, then yeah, remember the next time that we come over here, uh, it's going to look way different. Okay, so I know some people were saying that a lot of habitats they see in zoos these days are about the same size. This, this one, probably not. If you can find me a, a, a more modern zoo with a polar bear habitat like this, well, actually, I don't want to know about it. I don't really want to know about it. But yeah, there's there's probably the big, big difference there, the pair, the bear, excuse me, habitats. How oof. How oof it is there. I guess you can age the tree. That's a good point, too. How open it is right now is really because, yeah, the foliage hasn't really grown in, right? Huh, that's a good point. Here we go, the back end of some more houses. I love the different architecture styles per each one, though. Like, each exhibit house has its own, like, different style. Ah, oh, that's so good. Staff only. Well, I'm going to do it anyways. Bra, bra, bra. <laughs> nice, it just goes back to a barn. All right, so we went down that way. This is more open space. And again, at least in the zoos that I've been to, like this is a very regular thing where just open grass areas where guests can just kind of hang out and go in and out, you know? Here we go, another aviary. What do we have here? Cool. Um, really nice aviary. <laughs> Take that frontier. <laughs> Take your space requirements and shove them. <laughs> this is really nice looking. Did you use the new, um... Oh yeah, you had to have, right? The new mesh pieces. Oh, man. Just in time. Just in time. This is so interesting, but also kind of sad. Glad we treat animals better these days. Yeah, and again, I think it's a, a great way to look at it as, you know, um, a great learning experience. You know, learn from where we've come, uh, where we've come from, essentially. Don't just completely dismiss it or act like it doesn't exist. You gotta kind of learn from where we've uh, come from. Learn from your mistakes, right? Or you're doomed to repeat them. Look at this! Holy guacamole! <laughs> this is really well done. I like the peafowl sitting in the middle there. The aviary, right, the aviary is really good. Oh, I'm starting to see the town too. There's so much to take in. Wow, I'm just gonna do a whole circle around this just so we can get a really nice appreciation for uh, this gazebo area. Imagine like a big band playing out in the middle or something like that. Man. And it, yeah, I've heard that some, you know, uh, Eastern countries are a little bit behind on the zoo curve as compared to like Western countries, but um, yeah, hopefully one day we'll all be in a better spot. I love the popcorn cart. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's great. And you, how stinking clever. Get the frick out of here right now. Do y'all see what they use for popcorn? It's flowers. The recolorable flowers. The classic flower bed bunched. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I love all the itty bitty trees here. Someone was saying it earlier, I think it was Tobes saying uh, that the trees are eventually gonna get bigger as time goes on. So remember these trees around this gazebo area. They're gonna grow up and make a little forest over here. Anyways, holy cow. 
This big park area would definitely eventually turn into a big savanna habitat. Oh, I like the guesses. I like that people are so involved with this that you're, you're kind of thinking like, hmm, yeah, in 10, 15, 20 years, what is this all going to look like? You know, what, what are the 1950s, the 1940s, the 60s going to uh, bring for this, this project, this zoo? This is, I love this row down here. Ferret. Aardvark, there you go. <laughs> Even Melee's saying, I can't wait for the trees to get bigger. <laughs> That's gotta be funny as a creator, sitting here like, oh, I can't wait till I can actually plant a forest, or have the forest I planted here to grow up. Oh! Demon bear! Did y'all see the demon bear sticking out? Oh no, does that mean that this is all the bear cages? Oh no. Oh, poor, poor go eyes, but you know, there you go. 1911 bear house. Yes, boor is born. This is made in 1911. Look at the architecture on it. Love it. Really, really good. Separated out. We have the black and brown bears. They act a little funny. Yeah, it's the it's the hit boxes and climbing and stuff. The idea is there, right? The idea is there. Wow. There we go. We got the llamas and camels. Oh, I love the... Oh, it's for camel rides. That's right. I remember... Again, a lot of the stuff I know we've looked over before in the past community showcases, but it doesn't hurt to... I think every single time Melee submits a new uh, time or a new zoo to look at, we'll always look at it all the way through. But yeah, um, remember this from last time where you have it set up with the um, camel rides, which you actually... Oh, no, it's not a zoo that I see this at, but a pumpkin patch that we go to has camel rides still. They have camel rides and horse rides and ass rides. <laughs> they, uh, donkey rides. Not horse rides. They don't do horses. It's just uh, camels and uh, donkeys, I believe. Anyways, yeah. So that's just something you don't see that much anymore. Um, where do we start? We started over here, right? Or no, we start right down there. We're down the main plaza. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. We'd have like six bears. No, they'd overcrowd it. Oh, God. See another aviary. Oh, man. This might be a better aviary than the last one. I can't decide. <laughs> 110 years by the end of it? Okay, so there you go. So round about 110 years, give or take, for uh, the, the time period that this zoo covers. Here's something that I've never seen, and I don't know that I... No, I take that back. Brookfield Zoo used to do this. Here's elephant rides. Elephant. What is it? Elephant rider... Ali van Treet. That must be the uh, the Latin name for it. Ah, that'd be interesting. Does anyone else? Did anyone else's zoos used to do elephant rides and camel rides and stuff like that? Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure if I remember right, uh, the Brookfield Zoo used to do that, but doesn't anymore. Brookfield Zoo is really old, too. I think it's over 100 years old, so a lot of questionable things used to happen at Brookfield Zoo, but yeah. Oh, okay, Melee, I gotcha. <laughs> Southwick did them until uh, 04. Wow, yeah. It's actually a decently large elephant habitat. You know, I was kind of thinking that, too. From what I've seen uh, of historical elephant habitats, especially if you combine the two of them together, it's not... I mean, it's bad, but it's not the worst, right? Huh. Well, let's go over here. Look at all the cars. Oh, I love the cars. Oh, 2014. Oh, wow. That, that's... Oh, whoops. <laughs> There's a, pictures of the queen on an elephant at the London Zoo, but isn't the queen like a hundred and something years old herself? So that could kind of make sense. She could have had that picture taken in like 1940. I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, a bunch of owls. That's cool. Marsh owl... Short-eared owl, the Eurasian eagle owl. Love all the... Uh, did you build all these, Melee? I know you were um, building a bunch of birds and other fish and stuff like that. Did you build all the birds and stuff we see in here? Or is a little bit of a mixture of um, you, Drock, and ZZ in them? Again, love all the cars. Gotta put your flappers on and go down to the zoo, you see? Please put the cars in the workshop. There you go, yes. Yeah, the different... Um, the sh like sheet metal that was up on the roof yeah i agree that was a cool little touch um here's some more i again i know i'm missing a lot of stuff so y'all better be downloading this <laughs> y'all better download this now before we go to the area that's going to absolutely melt our brains we're going to go left first i know everyone's sitting there like oh my god we're about to go to the main street nope i'm going to tease you a little longer 
We're gonna go over to the left and take, now this is the estate. So this is the zoo owner. Um, this is their estate that they live on. So all of this beyond the wall, you can kind of see where the wall is right through here. So everything on this side is the, again, yeah, the mansion or the estate. So, and uh, yeah, if you go back to earlier iterations of the zoo, this wall is not there and the whole thing is just whoosh, just kind of open. You just kind of can go walk up into it. Uh, also, I noticed that the estate has a lot more trees around it. Some are made by Drock, some are made by Labor or something. Yeah, that's right. Do, do, do. Queenie is 95. Woo! Yes, yes. She's, uh, I knew she's up there. <laughs> Where's the helipad? <laughs> <laughs> nice. 1953 was when the pics of the queen were on the elephant. Okay, so there you go. It wasn't too far off. Uh, here's the estate, which um, we have looked at this, but it, looks, it still looks great. Love the cars you've added in there. Gardening in the back looks fantastic. <laughs> God save her. Hey, if she's 95 and still kicking around doing the whole queen thing, whatever she's doing is working, right? Whatever she's doing, it's working all right. I love this. It looks so good. Love all the little details. I'm not zooming down in just because there are details like down in the barn areas and stuff like that. Uh, just because we have looked at them before, but uh, definitely check them out when you download the zoo there. The others were made by someone else, so I can't put on the workshop. Ah, that's fair. That's fair. Nice. Well, let's go ahead and zoom over. We'll go over the uh, garden here. Well, let's zoom over to this street. Because there's a lot going on down this main street area here. All right, we're gonna get right down and car view here. Ba 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 ba. Look at all the great foliage on the right hand side. Hope for an avian or flying pack, and probably get some bats. Oh man, yeah, that's like that feels like the last uh, piece of the puzzle, doesn't it? We have digging, we have swimming, we have. Uh, Yep. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Wait for a bus? Sounds good. <laughs> That's great. Uh, but yeah, flying's the last bit there. Hey, what's up there, BZ? Hope you're having a good one there, buddy. All right, here we go down the main road. Uh, just here we go. I just, I'm ready. I'm ready for uh, all the details. There you go. Here's the town. Look at this. Look at all the details there. A mirror tool? Oh man, yeah, we've been requesting a mirror tool since Planet Coaster. That would be amazing. Wow, I love the building uh, sets. Let's go down here a little bit further. Don't want to miss these houses. He's been waiting for like a decade now. Huh, that bus is running late. That bus is running late. This looks like a church. Wow. I kind of love all the unique architecture that you have throughout here. Um, not, you know, sure some of them are, but really not too many of the buildings are alike. They're all relatively different. This is a, uh, this is a tram station, isn't it? Yeah, look, there you go. There's the double-decker tram. Oh, that's so well done. Oh, a synagogue, thank you. Love the tram station there. Oh, you even have the markings on the ground too? Holy guacamole, my friend. <laughs> that looks so good. I love all the side roads you have. Like, it actually goes back a block and stuff. There's a great church that we'll see later. Okay, cool. Cool. Oh, I see it already. I'm going to come down a little bit so we don't ruin the surprise. I just saw it, though. <laughs> oh, I love all the colors. I, I think we broke Yakim. Someone reboot him. <laughs> error. Error. Does not compute. <laughs> reboot him. Holy. Okay, so here's where all the billboards come into effect. I was wondering where they were. Oh, and there's your big reveal right there. Oh, that church. Now, is that the Haribo Church? Have you considered becoming a subscriber? Maybe leave a like while you were at it. There you go. That's right. For this video and for Mealy's videos, of course. Um, oh, these were the posters that were being made by... Someone was making a bunch of these posters, weren't they? On Burn Nation Discord. They made one... Uh, for me, for Thornton Hill Zoo as well. Was it you, Mealy? <laughs> was it you that was making them? Mm. It is the Haribo Church. Yes, we've looked at that before. It's really great. Really good uh, placement for it. 
Hey, there we go, Thermoshotty. Thermoshotty. <laughs> it's Wallaby time. Look at these. I love all the posters on the side. We got the Rising Pretty Service. Oh, this, what a good little uh, Drock. That's who it was, Drock. Yes. I love all the throwbacks to the community in here. Next, there you go. <laughs> There's the Haribo, the Elusive. Simply because he asked me to. Yeah, everyone's going like, what's a YouTube? What's a YouTube? <laughs> the wiser you get. Oh, I love all the little community hints that you've thrown in here. What? Films that go beyond. Beyond Drew Productions. <laughs> there it is. Nice. Uh, who else do we have going in here? There's Wyatt. <laughs> There's Wyatt Andrews' little toy workshop. Perfect for all the good boys and girls. Prequel memes? A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. <laughs> this damn one looks like a PZ tweet. Oh, no. <laughs> Nicholas, the Lion Rider. Truly a sight to behold, said John. Live at the circus. <laughs> uh, Mr. Domez, household appliances you can trust. <laughs> These are so good. Hey, there's the Mike She's gardening service, of course. We've been tricked, we've been backstabbed, we've been quite possibly bamboozled. Drock's worst? <laughs> Labor something, there we go. Quality taxidermy, fully posable, and realistic animal displays, literally, yep. <laughs> they're tiny, they're frozen, they're balls, they are little ice spheres, a whole... And she does productions, yes. Potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. I'm having way more fun looking at the billboards than I am doing anything else. These are just fantastic. <laughs> the Carlos Dinosaur Exhibit. So everyone knows Carlos, right? He's the one that makes all of the uh, fossils and things you put inside your museums. Leaf Productions, there you go. Who else do we have? If I miss someone, apologies. Frontier, there you go, Frontier Development. ZZ, ZZ's Little Pet Shop. Uh, who else? Who else? So long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Hey, there we go. There's the star of the hour, Mealy. Yeah, there you go. Nice. That's so good. Let's go back and, um, let's go look at the other side of the road now. Again, really fun whenever people can put in uh, little bits of uh, community members and stuff, right? <laughs> that's great. Cool, so let's go down this way. I recognize some of these as uh, blueprints, other ones as uh, yours. Oh, yeah, so cool. Cool, cool, cool. And then let's look up top here for the church. I know you didn't build it, but still, it's a really good placement for it, so. Nice. And there is the rest of the town done up. Wow, that, that's a whole project within itself right there. I can't imagine how long that all took. And we didn't even look at the rest of it, right? There's little houses back there, so... Holy guacamole. You did a lot. All right, well, hey, let's take an overhead view. Mealy, is there anything big, substantial that I missed, my friend? Or is that pretty much uh, covering it? If we did, we will take a look. But uh, yeah, if not, then everyone, if you haven't already, what are you doing? Subscribe to this. Go take uh, motivation. Go subscribe to Mealy's YouTube channel as well. Um... Yeah, get all the inspiration. Again, this is such a cool idea. Such a cool idea. So, uh, yeah, definitely check everything out there. Where parents worked for, um, over there, this reminds me, brings back memories of that. Nice, nice. Where do I sign up to get some uh, advertisement? Yeah, right, it said some advertisement space was, uh, was available, so cool. That's all good? All right, well, hey, let's go ahead and back on out. And we'll take a look at, I think there's one more. Two more. There's two more things we need to show off. The African River from Toves, and then we have to show off, we'll end it with um, Lion Riders thing. Yeah, that's right, I forgot to show off. The Faru Falls White Rhino Habitat. Yeah, no, I'm glad everyone uh, liked that. Hopefully more people can uh, keep up to date with that project, because uh, it's, it's a unique one within the zoo community. I don't think I'm seeing anyone else do that. And it's really cool that you're keeping it up on YouTube. Usually you see something like that only on a forum. Uh, so it's really cool that you're keeping it up on uh, YouTube, as good as you are. I feel like my maps aren't this big. Yeah, what the heck? 
All right, so this is going to be the African River from Toes, and this is part of your, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the project that you have going on right now. Forgive me, but um, I'm going to start by looking at something in the past that we looked at already. Uh, remember the aardvark habitat we saw by Toes uh, last week? Here it is in, like, how it's actually supposed to look. That's why I wanted to show this off, because I showed it off kind of shittily. <laughs> um, so here's how it's actually supposed to look, and I love it, love it, love it. Oh, you even have some aardvarks coming in here. Uh, yeah, so that's why I wanted to show that off real quick, but let's take a look at the main attraction, which is the African River, and this is so nice, really fantastic uh, rock work and foliage, uh, and such a really uh, unique idea. So here you go, look at this. You see the little viewing area up there, but look at the rock work and foliage work. Uh, if we keep it here, we'll probably soon see some animals cross over, because yeah, they also, uh, yeah, it's there they go. There goes right here. What animal is this? It's the water buffalo? Oh, African buffalo. The African buffalo. Yeah, I love that idea of like a, again, an African like river crossing area. <laughs> the artworks are fake because they're moving. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, look at this. So cool. You know, I didn't even notice the details you put in over here with like the water movement and stuff. So yeah, there you go. If you, uh, this is one of them that if you do subscribe to it, um, it's a, another good to go, ready to go um, zoo to kind of build in here. You have the two areas where the guests are already. And yeah, you kind of keep up with that. But yeah, this is another one also that is up on YouTube. So if you're not following Toves, be sure to follow Toves as he continues to expand out this entire project. But yeah, that's looking really cool. Yeah, it's a really cool concept. Really, really cool. So. Cool, yeah, be sure to uh, subscribe to this and subscribe to Toves to uh, stay up to date with the uh, with this project. Because, yeah, it's really unique. Really unique. So, nice. Yeah, really good canyon. Yep. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the last thing, which will load up into the community map. That takes like two seconds to do, thankfully. Um, and we'll show off Lion Rider's thing. Which I'm glad that you submitted this because I saw Lion Rider start this map on a stream like a week ago now. And he went in the middle of the stream, he's like, oh, I have an idea. I'm going to build a rhino. And I think everyone in chat, as he started to build it out of rocks, was just like, I don't, what? I don't see it, man. I can't see it. And by the end of the stream, I was like, I still don't see it, Lion Rider. I still don't see it, Nick. <laughs> but when I saw the picture of it, when he submitted it, I was like, oh. I see it. <laughs> I definitely see it. Well, Faru, that's what it's called. Faru Falls. This is another one I can't believe this fit into a blueprint. Boom! All right, so here's a white rhino habitat that everyone can use inside their zoos. And here we go from a lion rider. We got a, we got a Frank escaped inside the exhibit. Frank, get out of there. You know you don't belong in there. So yeah, yeah you can actually go back um, on Lion Rider's YouTube channel and take a look at part of this being built and i think you finished the rest of it um off stream unless i missed the second half of the stream then whoopsies um but anyways yeah look at this so well done so well done aha the the planet zoo blueprint system has struck again i believe there's supposed to be a platform or something underneath that right or is that where the path goes uh, either way but um this looks really gonna love the rhino thing right there. You also made a little rhino on one of the walls of the building. Well, let's take a look at that. Let's go take a look at that. Foliage looks really nice. There it is. <laughs> nice. What did she use for those gutter pieces? Oh, the North African plaster decal? Oh, this little piece. That's what all the teeny tiny uh, builders are using now. That's really good. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, now you can totally see uh, see the rhino. <laughs> definitely see the rhino head in it now. So yeah, that's really cool. Really unique build. And uh, definitely get this into your zoos for your white rhinos. So cool. 
So yeah, when you look for this down in the description, it is going to be in the zoo area, the like the parks or zoos area. For now, I'll change it after the stream is done. I'll, I'll put it into the blueprint section. So cool. Hey, but hey, guess what? That goes ahead and finishes um, the showcase for the week. So cool. Um, thanks so much everyone for hanging out. Don't forget, if you're not part of the Discord already and want to submit something, be sure to uh, sub uh, join the Discord and submit to the community showcase uh, area. Just so everyone knows, if you are part of the Discord, if you submit something to the workshop links, that doesn't get featured in the showcase. So um, I have a I have a community showcase tab and the workshop links tab, um, just because I know some people don't want to have their stuff shown off. So, but just in case you don't know, whatever goes in the community showcase tab will be showing off. Workshop links won't be showing off. So, uh, but yeah, if you have anything to show off, join the Discord. And yeah, what else? Uh, tomorrow we will not be live with D and D because tomorrow is. Uh, the 4th of July, so fellow Americans, happy 4th of July. Be safe, don't blow your hands off or anything, but have a good time. Drink a beer, <laughs> have a hot dog, shoot a gun. I don't know, you can do American things. So uh, have a happy 4th of July, but yeah, there won't be any D&D &D tomorrow. So D&D &D will be next week over on the Digital DM Twitch. And yeah, cool. So hey, thanks so much everyone for hanging out. Always do appreciate it. And yeah, we will see you all live here next Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, 12 p.m. Eastern for our community showcase. So yeah, until then, hey, have a good one. Get America. <laughs>